Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. The topic of today's podcast, because you guys love it when Julie and I talk about mindset stuff, is real estate mindset mastery, unleashing your inner power. And I think all of you appreciate a slight break from our normal programming because it does allow you an an opportunity to sort of maybe take a step back from the normal grind of real estate, the doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And uh, when we talk about the mindset stuff, it does kind of, op- it shifts your brain into a different a mental and emotional state that's a bit relaxing. And, and ultimately what happens is it's a stress. If you allow it to leave your body just momentarily while you listen to today's podcast, the normal grind of what you're maybe focused on presently and just be with us the next 30 minutes, you will find at the end of today's podcast, you actually have a lot more clarity and the, let's call it struggle or the grind is a little bit less intense and maybe a little bit more, um, you know, maybe you're more appreciative of the challenges that you have without necessarily seeing them as the headwinds as they often feel like that they are. Yes, hopefully things feel a bit more manageable to you. So our mindset topic today starts like this. Have you ever found yourself regretting something that you said too hastily, sent a text without due consideration, or reacted excessively in an email? Ever wish there was an unsend button for those moments? Perhaps it's not always your own misstep, but dealing with somebody else's verbal or written blunder. We've all experienced being both perpetrators and victims of overreactions, but there's a tale that speaks volumes about mindset and serves as a reminder during moments of conflict or stress. Now, all of our notes for today's podcast, and Julie's about, uh, she's going to read you something that um, some of you may have been exposed to before. But it is pretty profound, so please listen to what she's saying. But the notes, all the long-form notes, are available for Harris Real Estate Daily subscribers. HarrisRealEstateDaily.com is our daily newsletter. And uh, yeah, so if you want today's show notes or any show notes, along with a lot of other exclusive content for newsletter subscribers, it takes about three seconds to actually subscribe. Just go to HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. We will send you an email. You have to double opt in. In other words, click the email saying that, yes, you'd like the newsletter. And thereafter, you are a subscriber. The newsletter is free. So if you're looking for the long form notes for today's podcast, that is where they're going to be. So just go to HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. All right, here's the story. Once a donkey was tied to a tree when the devil came and untied it. The donkey then ran into the fields, causing havoc by destroying crops. Upon witnessing this, the farmer's wife shot and killed the donkey. Enraged, the donkey's owner retaliated by shooting the farmer's wife. When the farmer returned and discovered his wife's fate, he sought revenge by shooting the donkey's owner. Subsequently, the owner's wife instructed her sons to burn down the farmer's house. The sons, gleefully following their mother's orders, assumed the farmer would perish in the fire. However, to their disappointment, the farmer survived and later retaliated by killing the wife and sons of the donkey's owner. Reflecting on the tragic chain of events, the remorseful farmer questioned the devil about the cause. The devil simply replied, I merely released the donkey, but it was your overreactions that unleashed the inner devil within each of you. Now, it's interesting that parable is because it really does exemplify what is going on a lot in the world right now. Yes. I mean, we don't even know why a lot of the things are happening and it goes back literally thousands of years. And so if you look at really the insanity of it all as one thing led to the other led to the other, it really does cause you to feel a little bit overwhelmed. And so, you know, one of the things, the point of this uh, that Julie's wanting to, you know, she's hoping you guys take away from today's show is that all the unintended consequences, both good and bad, for the decisions you make in your behaviors. Uh, I've certainly been in situations before where I, you know, maybe shot before I aimed. I don't think you ever, have you ever been, you were saying all of us are, you know, wanted to One take back. One way or another. I mean, you know, emails and texts and things like that. I, I, I think if I think about our real estate career, I probably could have some examples of dealing with inspections and things like that yeah, where I just it, got mad and, you know. But in the last 20 years, I can't Not think recently. of a single time where you basically have been in a situation where you were telling me that you wish you would have maybe taken a pause before sending. And it's and then you do have a nice way of basically curbing yourself on that. When Julie and I talked about some of our rules that we've adopted for ourselves, 
that unless you're you know a friend, we're not going to really communicate with you after about five o'clock. And it, the reason we found that out uh, that that's always a bad idea is because a lot of the worst messaging that happens on Twitter and some of the socials, we read this, happen when people are at home having alcohol after a long day. And then they're sending off these messages that certainly in the next day, they're not really, they're going to probably regret having done. Yeah. And we have personal rules too, just to expand on that. You know, when Julie and I, if you ever invite Julie and I to a party or if you're ever at a party with Julie and I, don't be surprised if we're slipping out around 9, 930 at the latest, because really nothing happens at an adult party after 9 or 930 no. that's going to be, you know, probably a memorable but a favorable way the next day. Yeah. So these are all types of things. And it's because, you know, we don't want to be around when someone's letting their donkey out of the stable. I originally heard that story when I was um, in, uh, uh, you know, a kid going to church. Mm -hmm. Right. And I always thought it was something from the Old Testament or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's not. You and I researched this. It's not actually a Bible story. No, it's not. And one of the things I was reminded of is uh, they talk about shooting the donkey. Right. So I don't think they had firearms like that back in biblical no, times. But, I mean, but they use this story in, in church and synagogue a lot just to make this, the point of be careful when you overreact, because to your point, historically, even one thing leads to the next leads to the next. And then you look back at that original decision, you're like, well, what if that had never happened? And I think, you know, you were talking about how in recent times I maybe haven't had that. It's because we have adopted and practiced the it's too soon to tell mantra for many years. And so I think I have trained myself to pause, which is our first point about how can this be made practical and applicable to your personal and business life. Let's look at some simple but critical rules to follow during stress, conflict, and confusion so that you don't let the devil control your mindset. So you don't let that donkey out to create havoc and then overreact. Okay, so point number one I just mentioned, pause before responding. When you're on the receiving end of a text, email, or face-to-face -face comment that triggers you in a strong reaction, resist. Do not reply immediately. Take a breath. Reread for clarity of understanding. Sometimes we just misunderstand things, especially texts. And then wait 20 or 30 minutes before responding. Next, ask yourself if a phone call would be a better way to handle things. People tend to be more aggressive when someone is not right in front of them or on the end of their end of the phone. And they tend to misconstrue the tone or intention of texts and emails. So pause and make a good decision before you fire back and potentially escalate the situation. And the bottom line there is it's always best, even though it takes more time to not respond right away. But when you do pick up the phone and make a call, um, you know, you don't. I, I'll tell you a situation I was in recently. Sure. I was sending a text to somebody and um, I actually had this happen three times where um, it change the words, you know, spell correct or didn't like, mm. you know, some Auto grammarly defaulted. or something. Yeah. yeah. And so what I actually sent and I didn't review it before I sent it, this mm -hmm. was in a text. Mm -hmm. And, and then like late, the person responded and I'm like going, well, that was a weird response. And then I went back to read what I actually sent and wasn't at all what I intended. Right. So, you know, those mistakes happened. This was in the middle of the day. It was mm -hmm. not, you know, um, while I was traveling or on a plane or anything, I just didn't take the time to read whatever the spell or grammar yeah, correcting. Correct. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that was AI working against me. <laughs> it does do strange things. That's true. And that's why we have to train ourselves to proofread for sure. And by the way, that's a great excuse. If you send a stupid text and you want to basically, uh, you know, hit, hit the uh, back in time machine and make it go mm -hmm. away and you want to respond for it, just tell them that you reviewed it. And it turns out that you uh, that AI had changed what you, the intent was or changed the grammar, of the actual words and see if that maybe gives you a free get out of jail free card. But the best idea is never send anything that you haven't proofed exactly. in the first place. Yeah, there are. I mean. You should stay off the uh, doom scrolling in Google, but there are some pretty hilarious examples of how bad the autocorrect can, yeah, can totally. misconstrue things. Okay, so point number two, consider the consequences. Before sending any messages or responding in person, think about the potential impact of your words or actions. Think about the story we just heard. Consider how your response might affect your relationship with the other person and whether it'll help resolve the issue or escalate tensions. Let's add to that. So if you're, if you're, um, you know, messaging with someone uh, that's, you know, Jewish and they're practicing their religion and you're messaging them after, what is it, Saturday at five o'clock or something? Friday night to Saturday night. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's going to be seen as, you know, you're at, le at the very least, you're not being very considerate of what's, you know, important to them. And, you know, that's something maybe you need to take into consideration. And there are a lot of other nuanced things that you need to be paying attention to. We talked, 
yesterday and the day before about really the differences between someone who is an amazingly successful real estate agent, but really in any business and one that's just average or one that frankly is failing. It always comes down to these tiny little nuanced differences that take no time to actually employ. It's showing class. It's showing respect. That's absolutely right. And so, you're gonna, are we yeah. going to do an updated manners podcast, by the way? It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pe- remember we did the uh, Are You a Text Offender the yeah. other day. So that was in the manners category. But yes, we're going to be doing more of that. Point number three, look at all sides before you respond. And I have to say, I absolutely learned that in real estate negotiations. And our broker originally told me, he said, imagine the situation is floating in the air. You're going to look at it from this angle. That's you. You're going to look at it from that angle. That's the other agent, from the seller, from the buyer, from all of these perspectives. Look at all the sides before you respond, not just your own. How will they perceive your words and actions? Are you being empathetic or are you being aggressive? Is your response constructive or destructive? What action can you expect from the other party next? Think again back to the story. If you do this, what will they do? Let, Are you focused on a good outcome? Sorry. So let's let's talk about something that you and I touched on. I had someone message me about this. Sure. So like you and I were talking about uh, coaching and I was saying that I, I require, if I'm going to take on a coaching client, that the coaching call only happens voice to voice. Yes. Because I've tried it with, and because I've done easily over a hundred thousand paid coaching calls Mm -hmm. where it was voice to voice. And I've trained my, or my brain has become very tuned in to all the little nuanced differences, especially when there's a really good, uh, you know, connection. And I can hear every little tiny thing, whether someone's telling me the truth, whether they're telling me a lie, whether, okay. Now, as soon as I started experimenting with doing video coaching calls, all my coaching calls started to suck. Why? Because what was happening was my visual uh, input was over was overpowering my my ears. In other words, your eyes will dominate your your ears. Your your eyes are a do- more dominant sense than your ability to hear. You guys understanding what I'm saying here? So if just start out with that mind with that thought as I share this with you. So if you're going to go and think you're going to communicate effectively, bypassing your two most powerful senses, and I could throw intuition in there as well, but it's Mm -hmm. not considered a sense, but you guys get the idea. And you're going to write to text, and you think you're somehow, I am a younger generation, we use emojis, all these things I've read and heard you guys saying, it is a mistake because ultimately there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years of evolution behind your ability to hear and see to actually read the other person micro expressions all the little idiosyncrasies and how they express themselves voices and whatnot and text and textual communication even a, a watch only video will never replace true communication you stop resisting what i just said because it's the truth and if you want to know how to have an unfair advantage not just in business and life don't ever think that there's going to be somehow be some sort of you know, technological revolution that you're going to be able to somehow not have to do the real work of, you know, not just real estate, but of life. And I see the biggest centers of this or the biggest, you know, people that are suffering the most are the ones that have built the most elaborate CRMs where you're using, and some of it's beautiful, it's so well done, but videos, you know, great emails, you know, all sorts of very clever marketing things to try to actually foster a real relationship with someone that really truthfully you could have in probably less than five minutes just picking up the phone and having a voice to voice conversation. Everyone, when everyone else rushes to the, you know, easy button, you need to go the opposite direction because that's where the opportunity is going to always be. Hopefully that's resonating with at least a few of you. Very well put, very well said and uh, intuitive of you. I, I, I do think that listening, I think your ears require a bit more intuition because you have to, there's things that you can do with your hearing that you can't do with your visual. And I agree with you, you can sense coaching clients what's going on with them once you get to know them a little bit. It, you can't see silence. When there's a pause, when you say something, or maybe you're saying something a little accountability-ish, let's say, you can't see that that thought process, but you can hear it when you're on the phone with people. So I think it does require some more intuition. Well, this since we're talking about this, and I know there's at least five people who think this is interesting, so I'm going to pile this on as well. <laughs> Hopefully. Listen to, don't watch, listen to CNN, Fox, MSNBC. Just listen to it. Don't watch it. And you will be shocked how much absolute blathering yeah. garbage there is coming out of their mouths. But you don't hear it for what it is when you're watching it. So when you're watching it, they're so good at manipulating you. Distracting. Through your, through, mm-hmm. So good at manipulating you through your dominant sense of your of the visual that they know you're not going to be listening as acutely as you would be if you're just, uh, you know, if you're just watching it right now. So here's the thing. It's also fascinating. 
Doing a podcast and having a really big audience is something that is very hard to do because of the fact that we know you're all listening to every single word we say. It is incredibly rare that you see anybody that uh, has a you know decent sized following on YouTube do a decent podcast for the reasons I just stated, because they are good at the visual medium, good at throwing up you know all kinds of things that distract your brain and all the fireworks and the lights and the things and the other things, and the, you don't notice that they're not actually really saying anything or their content is absolutely lightweight garbage. But if you were to stop watching and just listen, your brain would pick up the fact that there's nothing there there. You guys get it? So that's the reason that so few people have very successful podcasts. Um, and that's the reason that virtually nobody has a podcast that's also successful on YouTube because the mediums or really the skill set of the presenter doesn't transfer. It's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. A, it's a great observation. Great test to run on yourself when you're listening and watching. Okay, number four, when in doubt of the other party's intentions, whether they're your own client, the other realtor, an inspector, an appraiser, or even a friend, just call them and ask if your understanding is what they intended, especially if you're getting ready to react to it or you're feeling some kind of assault. Just call them and or you, set up a coffee. And if you did screw something up, you simply call them up and say, listen, uh, you know, you're all of a sudden they're acting adversarial to you. Call them up, suck it up and say, listen, Bob, uh, you know, based on your last based on whatever, right, something you said or a text or whatever. I may have offended you and I want to you know, make it clear I didn't mean to offend you. So if, if there's something I did or said that was offensive, I sincerely apologize. That's right. That's better than ghosting them, which sometimes agents do to each other or to even their friends. That's better than escalating it, especially because your escalation might not be based on the intention. Such and that might by be. the way, old Bob there might not realize that he's he doesn't actually you didn't offend him. He's not upset at you. He doesn't realize the way he's communicating uh, with you and probably everybody else comes off as somewhat abrasive, you know? So you might be helping him to maybe, I think, restage his approach to communicating with other people. Mm -hmm. But if you think you have offended someone, now, some people need to be offended. I'm not going to say there's certainly you should <laughs> go through life with just basically being a punching bag. No. You know, it's okay to essentially, you know, remove people from your life that are adversarial to you or maybe passive aggressively adversarial to you. Those people need to be purged. And, you know, unfortunately, it's sometimes the people that are closest to you. And so that we give you full permission to do. But oftentimes you will come across people that are really crappy communicators in the digital format. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe you're a really crappy communicator in the digital format. And if you find yourself losing relationships or people not understanding, do step into the fray and apologize. So, you know, listen, Bob, I apologize. I, I was rereading our messaging back and forth. And I don't think it was really uh, you know, conveying what I was actually thinking and feeling. So I apologize if I offended you in any way. It will require your ego to be put in the back seat, but it will elevate you, not just in, it'll elevate you from the inside out so that you actually will start to change your way that you interact with other people. Because the response that Bob will have, if you did offend him, he's going to be shocked that hmm. you actually are, yeah. you know, accepting responsibility and owning it. Now, even if you know you did not offend him, if he's acting as if you did, still apologize for offending him. That will change the nature of your relationship and how you think forever. It does get back to manners at the end of the day. It does. <laughs> Oddly enough. Okay, number five, of course, ask for help from your coaches. Every day in our coaching sessions, you can send a situation over and ask for help. Don't go it alone and don't guess at what to do. And number six, I found this to be interesting. Words matter. Proofread your texts, your emails, and even what you plan to say face to face and ask yourself whether your wording is inflammatory, triggering, or overly aggressive. Instead, be solution oriented, professional, and understanding. So I have some examples of inflammatory or triggering words versus saying the same thing, but using a more professional alternative. So before you get to those points, Julie, um, I'm going to ask your opinion, okay? Sure. So we have a 10-year-old daughter mm -hmm. who's growing up with Grammarly, who's growing up with AI, <laughs> yeah. who's uh, probably going to be a better writer than you know both of us combined by the time she's like 11, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking your opinion. If someone is not frankly out of practice or never really learned how to articulate themselves in an effective way mm -hmm. either verbally or otherwise right what do you think about using artificial intelligence grammarly and the rest of it to really you know help them uh you yep. know express themselves 
I think it's a great tool that's becoming better as it learns more, of course, as long as you still proofread before you hit send, mm -hmm. because it, I think the mistakes that it makes are what I find when I use it as kind of a writing assistant for real estate, because it's not as in the real estate world. It, it isn't quite as tuned into that intention, perhaps. But overall, as somebody that does write a lot, I can I can tell you, I, I know it's improving my writing, my intentionality, Good. Um, my clarity. Sometimes it just changes a couple of words around. Oftentimes it will shorten what I'm trying to say and be more clear. So yeah, I, I do believe AI plus Grammarly plus don't skip the step of proofreading. And then yeah, you can absolutely train yourself. I, I, I believe that the reason that Zoe spells so well is A, because she's always loved to read, but B, because she's grown up on autocorrect for spelling. Hmm. So she'll be sending me a text and it, she'll be using some word that I know maybe maybe she can spell, but it'll it'll autocorrect and that's how she learned to spell. That's so awesome. I think that's a, a tremendous advantage. It's interesting though how people mm -hmm. frame, like the question I was, I, I kind of knew how you were gonna answer it, but a lot of people will frame that all of those essentially writing and really thinking aids mm -hmm. are going to have an adverse effect on younger kids, I and I so. don't see how it's how that's even conceivable no. because it's going to ask, it's going to give them an opportunity to learn things faster at a higher level than we ever did. I mean, mm -hmm. she's in the fourth flipping grade, and she's already learning stuff that you and I know that we weren't learning till the seventh or eighth grade. Absolutely true, and by learning through, I, it's kind of like uh, writing immersion. You know how it's different learning Spanish living in Puerto Rico versus learning Spanish in eighth grade Spanish? Yeah. Totally different. When when she's immersed into that writing and she's just seeing how that goes, she's not even registering that, hey, I'm learning how to conjugate some verb or how to add IES versus apostrophe S versus S. She's just learning it. She's just absorbing it, that. And I think we can do that as adults too. All right, so words matter. I'll give you some examples. You might say, here's the most common one. We, you've heard this from us before. Reduce the price. Tim, it's time to reduce the price. Well, we don't say that. No, I know. That's the stressful version. Not stressful or less stressful or using words like adjust, improve, or modify the price. Or use one of our scripts, which simply says, you know, <laughs> essentially, Mr. Seller, we need to position the house on the market so that it correctly reflects the buyer's expectations, right? And you don't yeah. say overpriced. You're going to say uh, you're not correctly positioned on the market. You need to say things like that. Julie's going to give you some more examples, and I don't want to step on any of them, but there are certainly words that if you say to a seller, whether they are going to, whether you are actually reading them to know what their reaction to you for using one of these words is or not, whether you're actually perceiving, but if you say lower the price, the seller is going to hate you. If you say, um, you know, anything that's going to have anything to do with what, anything that causes them stress. Cut slash reduce. Exactly. Bad. And if you're having those conversations when you're trying to win the listing, guess what? You're not going to get the listing. So you yep. need to learn how to present, you, and you know, it's the best way of explaining it is the difference between a good doctor and a bad doctor is the good doctor and the bad doctor know what to do. They just go about explaining to the patient with different levels of, you know, verb, uh, verbal and uh, communication skill. Absolutely. Same, you know, like you think about home inspectors, there's bad, you can have home inspectors that have the same skill, but one of them is a bad home inspect, quote, bad home inspector because they freak your clients out. Versus the home inspector that says, you know what? I see this all, all the time on houses that are this age. This is no big deal. You know, might cost you a few thousand dollars, but boy, you'll be glad to have a better house when it's done. Mm -hmm. Totally different. It's not that you are not making your point or not negotiating for your client. It's the way you're doing it is more professional and less controversial. So agents get into it sometimes, or maybe with your spouse or your kids by just saying you're wrong. That's the stressful version. You might say instead, I or my client, we have a different perspective on this. And when you're in conversation with somebody, and Julie and I are, you know, all this stuff is so funny, we're practicing with Zoe, but we'll hear her what she, what she says, and then we'll repeat what she says. So Zoe, you're saying that you shouldn't have, <laughs> this is one that happened over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to have some friends over, and her room was a pig's die. Yes. Okay, and we told Disaster. her that she has to clean her room up before she can have her friends over, to which she said, my friends are going to be over playing in my room to which we're going to make the room a mess again. So why should I clean up my room knowing that I'm going to make it basically a mess as soon as my friends are over and it'll just need cleaned again? Which, by the way, was a really good point. Totally logical. Yeah. So <laughs> so what we said is opposed to just being draconian and say, go clean your room or no, no, no. Because I said so. Right. We have tried that in the past, but it never works. No. So what we said is, Zoe, just so I understand what you're saying. And we repeated what she said. And then we said, so this is the reason you want to do it. 
because when your friends come over, they want to see that, that your room is nice and clean and orderly, and it'll make them feel more welcoming. Zoe, imagine if you were walking into a store and all the clothes that you wanted to look at or whatever example it was, was just a big jumbly mess. Would you even want to stay in that store? And those types of things. And then she got the point. And, and the same thing is going to happen when you're dealing with any adults, any humans at any age. Yeah, it's all about language and presentation, right? Okay, so here's a stressful statement. You're making a mistake versus saying, have you considered, right? Here's another example. You need to. When you do that, you come off sounding like a third grade teacher. You need to do this. You need to do that. Nobody likes to hear that. Instead of, you, you could say, what would happen if you, that causes thought. When you say you need to, it causes a reaction. Don't tell me what to do. But again, just, uh, try this with a little bit of, frankly, manipulation. So what I'm hearing you say is that you are uh, wanting to lean in the direction of X, Y, Z. But let me ask you, what would happen if you? Exactly. Same point, but with a little bit of sugar on top. All right. Stressful. You're being unreasonable. <laughs> Not stressful. Let's find a compromise that works for everyone. Stressful. You just don't understand. Not stressful. Let me clarify. So what happens when someone's being adversarial to you, uh, verbally or otherwise, what's going to happen is if you heighten that emotional state of combat, <laughs> of conflict, remember the, you know, the whole donkey and the whole rest of it, what's going to happen is one thing's going to become the next, it's going to become the next, going to become the next. And then you're just going to be part and parcel to constant uh, elevated, uh, you know, tension and drama. Drama and, you know, all aspects of your life are going to feel under uh, attack because of the fact that you were part and parcel to allowing the situation to uh, to compound, to get progressively worse. So give yourself a break uh, and give yourself permission to put an end to it. And what happens is even if someone's being adversarial to you, now remember some people are just sociopaths, but if someone's being adversarial to you, what you do is you repeat and affirm what they're saying. If you think, or if they're acting as if you offended them, even if you don't think you did, um, you know, swallow the pride pill and actually apologize for, you know, offending them. You take a stance of letting them know that they're heard, that you understood what they said, and then giving them a slightly different, a different pivot away from the escalation of the conflict. You'll be shocked how frequently the conflict just ends because what you've done with your positioning is you've actually caused their ego to get unplugged from the next natural state in their ego, uh, it, which is essentially, you know, elevating the conflict, making things worse, taking it to the next level. And the drama of life nowadays has become, you know, it's everywhere, but you don't have to participate in it. This, you know, being media free is one of the greatest gifts you can give to yourself, especially with what's going on now. If anything really happens that's significant, somebody's going to tell you. And I'll give you guys a real good example. Julie and I were on someone's uh, boat um, last night or the night last before? Night. Okay. Was it last night? No. Well, last last week. week. Anyway. It was the night before last. Recently. Night before we were, last, we were yeah. on someone's boat. And this was a big, beautiful boat. And it was more of a yacht, if we're using real words. Um, you know, it was a big catamaran, a 61-foot uh, catamaran with like a 50-foot bow. And it was fancy boat. Fancy yeah, boat. Sure. And we're out in the port of uh, San Juan, and we were watching the sunset. There were like 50 people on this thing, whole thing. And everyone, we noticed, people were talking about uh, what was happening in a particular news story. And this was, had to do with Israel. And we don't watch the news. We literally don't watch the news. We don't listen to it. We don't watch it. We completely tune out of it. But we started picking up that there obviously was something going on because people were talking about it. You know, it was weird. You're at a party on a yacht and there's people that are in little circles and they're talking about this, you know, this, this, that, and the other thing. So we leaned in and we asked them what was going on. And they told us. And they were all surprised we didn't know, of course. Why am I telling you this? Because when something is happening in the world that you need to know about, you're going to find out about it. All the rest of the stuff that's happening in the news, all the rest of the stuff that's happening on the internet, all the stuff that's happening on Twitter, all the stuff that's happening on X, all the stuff that's happening on truth, all the stuff that's happening, you can ignore. And when you do ignore it, there's an old saying, nature adhorbs a vacuum. So if you remove the drama from your life, when you remove yourself from all of that, you know, letting of the donkeys out of the uh, stables, as it were, uh, and you then, what's going to happen is there's going to be this big emotional, psychological, and literal uh, time benefit you get back. You get your energy back. You get your focus back. And then what do you do with that? You don't go look for more drama. You then focus on basically becoming the best version of yourself, primarily as a real estate practitioner. You then, you inwardly direct and you become the best version of yourself and stop allowing yourself to be so overtly manipulated by whatever the drama de jour is at that very moment. 
Well, it is very much connected to the whole media thing, right? Yep. I, I think people are way more triggered, way faster on a lot of tiny things because they're being fed all of that drama all the time. Even if you're really not that, uh, even if you just like you're driving around going to a showing or something and you have it on the background, just because you're not really listening to it doesn't mean it's not getting in your head. And so that's part of the reason why people get so easily triggered is because they, to your point, when you are media free, you're making space in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, you're making space for the good stuff. If it's stuffed full of the bad stuff all the time, you're not going to make it, right? I, I remember, Julie, during the Frank, uh, the, 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 the Floyd riots that were happening during yeah. COVID, um, you and I weren't talking, I mean, we're sticking, we've never changed our stance. We do not talk nope. about politics. Nope. We're not going to, you know, spoil our half hour a day with you guys talking about stuff that's going to not, you know, elevate you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and hopefully financially, right? We're not just, no, no, thank you. Not us. That's the reason thousands of you listen to us every day. It's a little break from, you know, your, your, your rest. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, so we weren't talking about it. And I remember it wasn't very many, but it was, you know, fewer than 20 people started messaging us, asking us why we're not talking about it. In their minds, it was the most important thing. How can we not talk about it? How can we not acknowledge it? How can it not be a topic, you know, talking about all the things that, you know, that would, that era was really intensely focused on. And I didn't really respond. I just remind them that what our opinion is on, you know, not talking, you know, all the things. And guess how some of them reacted? They reacted very negatively towards us. They were not just, you know, I, they were pissed that Julie and I weren't taking a stance. We had people that were, you know, calling us really nasty things um, because of the fact that we weren't, you know, on this side of the argument or that side of the argument. But we did not participate. We did not, um, you know, unfortunately, those people were so, uh, I would say, overwhelmed with the emotions from all the drama that other people had implanted in their souls that they didn't even really know it. Now, mm -hmm. you know, what do you do in a situation like that when the world insists that you're on this camp or that camp? Have you guys noticed that? Have you never noticed that you have to have an opinion on every damn thing? <laughs> have you, when is the last time you tried to actually not have an opinion on anything? You just, you know, saw yourself as somebody who was going to be an observer of what's going on in the world. You're not going to try to throw down with this cause or that cause. That's what being media free allows you to do because then you start seeing how people really are addicted to, to the tribalization. Our tribe used to be the world's, you know, America's tribe used to be the United States of America. Now, look how it's all become fractionalized. Mm -hmm. Why does that happen? Well, I don't know the why. I'm not going to spend time to figure it out, but I know I'm not going to participate in it. And I'll strongly suggest you guys don't do it as well. I'm not saying don't be politically aware. I'm not saying don't have your views or your perspectives, whatever the side of the aisle that they're on. What I am saying is oftentimes those views and perspectives, because you're giving it this energy, will really limit, if not obscure, your potential, not just as a real estate practitioner, but as a human. As a person. It's going to adversely mm -hmm. affect your, your relationships, you, everything. I mean, and that's something that I really hope you guys all give yourselves the permission to is understanding the whole point of this mindset podcast was understanding the unintended consequences of everything. You put that sign in your front yard saying that you're, you know, your family believes in this or your family believes in that. What are the unintended consequences of that? You know, you have a thousand people in your neighborhood or 500 people in your neighborhood. Chances are 250 of those people don't like you anymore. Is that what you intended to do? You guys get it? That's a great example. You know, one thing leads to the next. That's the whole point of the story of the donkey and the devil. Right. So the reason that I use the that story is because it's a short story that we can all remember. And I think when we feel triggered or when we might have made, mis, made a misstep and we're on the other end of it, we can think of oh, the devil and the donkey story. Maybe I need to be careful about that. Or maybe it's better to think of that before you hit send, before you had that conversation, before you get you know into conflict with somebody. It's an easy story to remember. I think it's an easy story to share with family. I'm going to talk to Zoe about it. You know? yeah, I was going to ask um, you if you told her a story yet. Yeah, not yet. But I, I think it's universally applicable. And I think what you're trying to say with, you know, it's not that we don't think you should be informed or have your opinion. It's that don't lead with your opinion on everything all the time. It's exhausting. It robs from your energy for yourself being a father being a son, being a great real estate practice practitioner, when you allow that space in, like, you know, the devil releasing the donkey, 
It wasn't the double that it's not the donkey's fault. Okay. It's all of the reactions along the way. So if you remove some of that, it makes so much more room for you to go towards your goals and follow your North star and be a better person. She just said something, your North star, your goals, because what's happening is if someone is, you're allowing other things, people causes institutions, does not matter what to co-op your potential. That's right. Something is essentially living rent free in your brain. Many things probably are living rent free in your brain and in your soul, which is essentially blocking out all your potential. That's what it really starts with. The acceptance of the fact that none of us are immune to being infected by the ramifications of letting the donkey out of the barn. But we can make decisions on how we decide to act. What we in the easiest <laughs> circling this, uh, you know, back in mm -hmm. the easiest way to end the cycle that's essentially killing your potential is to go media free. I really, truly believe that. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Try it. Yeah, <laughs> try start, it. Start a day, not this podcast, but start start by a day and make it a week and see how you feel and see what you are filling in that space with. Yep. You might feel, you know, I was thinking as you were talking, I wonder with this whole, you know, onslaught of too much media all the time, when people feel exhausted that's probably why. Well, it's when when it's people feel tired, when yep. people feel hangry, it's not those things. It's because you have bum, you know, bombarded emotions, your brain. It's right. emotions. And of course you're exhausted from that. Right. You know, so break up with it. And that's why I love podcasts, honestly, is because you can curate what's going into your mind and your soul and your brain and what you do with that. I, I think it's the best way to prune what you don't want and keep what you do want. We're not designed to constantly be getting little endorphin hits that we yeah. get from social media, from news. When you're doom scrolling and you come across all these little salacious headlines, you do get a little spark of chemical release. It's your fight or flight mechanism. It's your circadian brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all these things that are that are essentially you know designed into you. And the the writers of the you know the the headlines and the creators of all this content, all the rest of it, they are manipulating you. And if you get addicted to it, because that little spike of, did you hear, like gossiping people, yeah. they love to say, did you hear? You might be one of them, right? How, are you somebody that loves to tell people information that they might not know? Look, I'm not saying there's not value in gossip, but there is. You know, evolutionarily, there's definitely value in gossip, right? But the moral of the story is, if you're somebody that loves telling those stories and you're someone that loves hearing it, look how much of society is dependent on your that constant stream of that little release of dopamine that happens every time you know like i said you doom scroll you send a message you watch a mm -hmm. video look how the video format if you want to see the insanity of it all how videos on youtube have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter you know we're mm -hmm. <laughs> julie and i were listening to this really great podcast actually uh, that was um, this gal that was 18 years old jenny, jenny hoyos what's her last name uh, hoyos h-o-y-o-s i think and this girl has uh, mastered the art and science of creating a 30 second uh, video. YouTube shorts. Yeah. YouTube shorts. And she's done a really high level, but all the thinking that went behind her being able to master that ability was extraordinary. And we're not talking technical. We're talking, um, you know, essentially how to encapsulate a message concisely. And her, her stuff isn't trendy. It's not her, you know, her brand, I think, if anything, is more religious based maybe family based it's not anything it's very that, family based i don't think anyone would find any of it offensive no i haven't watched a ton of it but so far it's it's good wholesome stuff but stuff like that actually is kind of good to watch yeah and we actually had zoe listen to the podcast too because zoe like probably your children want to be a youtube star mm -hmm. you know so but, but to see you know the art and craft to it there is a lot that goes into that 30 so, seconds. I sure hope they don't make it a 10 second, second clip one day. But that's the good manifestation of all yes. this. But the mo mo for the most part, most of the short form media, most of the content out there is designed to basically pull you into somebody else's mm -hmm. agenda so it can essentially co-opt your potential. And Julie touched on this. You lose days, you lose weeks, months, years, decades because you're so tied into this sort of dogmatic approach to life that you know, someone has, you, you every single day have to listen or watch these videos, the breaking news that's coming from, you know, somebody who's trying to give you the latest salacious headlines. And you guys noticed you're addicted to that stuff. Break free of it and watch how you go through different phases of, um, you know, detox in essence. You're going to have anxiety because, oh my gosh, what's going on in the news? And then you're going to experience that. Some of you will experience it like as if you're coming off caffeine or any other addictive substance. That lasts usually a week. And then you're going to start, you know, realizing that you feel better, you sleep better, you're communicating better, mm -hmm. you're more receptive to positive, um, 
the, the, the positivity that's in all of us innately. And you're then going to start feeling different. And maybe someone's going to say something to you. You're probably going to look different. Your, you know, your, your physiology is going to act, you know, behave differently. I promise you guys, the poison that some of you are addicted to, that's you know, essentially been normalized, that's the donkey. You got to acknowledge it for what it is. It's already been released. You've got to make the decision to no longer allow that to continue to, you know, mag or what would be the word, uh, become progressively worse in mm -hmm. your life. That's right. Very. I mean, I can't say it any better. Yep. So guys, listen, thank you for keeping this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents in the United States. This podcast is typically within the top 20 of 5 million podcasts. We're in the business section and the uh, you know career section. Uh, so that is because of all of you allowing Julie and I to be alignment with our highest and truest purpose on this planet, which is being a service to you, professionally speaking. That is what we've committed um, our work time on this planet uh, to be focused on is helping you guys become the best versions of yourselves as real estate practitioners. So we sincerely thank you for the honor and the pleasure of being your online real estate trainers. Now take the next natural step and become a premier coaching client. Go to premiercoaching.com or just click the link below in the show description. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.